Hi everybody, Quint Lears, newhomesales.com. I'm here with Tim Costello, the Chief Executive Officer for BDX, Builder Digital Experience. You're one of the big thought leaders here at the at the program. You've got a couple of big speaking. Talk about what you spoke about yesterday and today. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a thought leader, but I'm probably a troublemaker. Industry troublemaker is probably more like it. Um, yesterday I was speaking to a group of CEOs and developers about digital disruption. And you know, I think the challenge in our industry is, Charles Fine is a professor at MIT that studies what he calls clock speed of industries. And it's and clock speed is like, how fast do industries change? You know, how agile are they? You know, how, how does technology affect them? And if you're in the cell phone industry or the semiconductor industry, for example, you've got a really fast clock speed. Technology is constantly changing. Your products are constantly changing. Your, the life around you, nothing is stable. Uh, the auto industry, much slower than microprocessors. Housing is the slowest industry that has ever been studied. It takes from 20 to 25 years for the housing industry to adopt any new product. So three tab shingles, PEX plumbing, drywall, those products took 25 years from the time they were introduced to the time that they're actually used standard in the industry. So we're not used to technology, and yet we live in a world that is being massively disrupted by technology in every single form, and we're participating in it. We're the ones driving an Uber, we're the ones you know that are buying things on Amazon, right? We're the ones that all have cell phones in our pockets and have a million apps. So we're, we personally are living in that world, but our industry is not yet adopted technology. So the question is, should we start to worry about that? Is it, is it time for the home building industry to actually wake up and begin to think about re, remaking itself, re-architecting itself as a technology-focused industry? And the answer to that question comes in what's called the tipping point. At, at what point is the risk of not doing something greater than the risk of doing something? And I, I could say that, you know, five years ago, no, the building industry is probably right. The risk of doing something probably was greater than the risk of not doing something, but all of that has changed. With virtual reality and augmented reality and 41% of millennial buyers buying a home without ever seeing the home last year, th these are absolutely groundbreaking changes in our industry. And you add to that what's going on in AI and chatbots and robotics, it is time for our industry to actually be technology first. So that's, that's what I w I've been talking about at the show mostly. Well, so, um, I, you know, everybody now is talking about, oh, the, the virtual reality, this thing, the, everything's going digital. But I remember years ago, I mean, you had out here with goggles. I mean, you've been kind of leading the pack. So talk to me about um, BDX, Builder Digital Experience. You started in year 2000. What, you, you're, you're kind of a, I say a thought leader because you're prognosticating to what's happening in the future. First of all, you have to understand, we're owned by the home building industry. So the home building industry owns us, and our job, basically, is to go out and look at technologies and figure out what technologies are going to affect our industry. We started in, in the year 2000 when the internet was just becoming a thing. Builders didn't have websites, uh, they had no way to attract customers and talk to customers online, so that was the very first product of BDX. O over the years, what we found, though, is, gosh, once you attract customers, you got to have good websites, and then you have to have good content. So we got in the content business, and the website business, and the kiosk business, and the app business, and the mobile business, right? We got into those businesses as a, as a course over time as those technologies became more important to builders. And today, AR and VR, augmented reality and virtual reality, are kind of the, the tip of the spear. Uh, th those are the technologies that are fundamentally changing our industry right now. So our job is to figure out how can we bring those technologies into this industry in an affordable turnkey manner. Builders don't have the staff or the funds to go develop this stuff themselves. So our job is to figure out how can we bring it to builders so it's as simple as sending us their drawings and what they get is a complete virtual experience back that's affordable. Peter, uh, last year we had him on the program. He blew my mind because they, they have the program called Is It Real or a Photo? Tell me about that. So that was just our, our launch several years ago into the renderings business, the renderings and animation business. And renderings have gotten to the point where they're almost really indistinguishable. And what, what's happened is you take renderings to the next step, you create virtual reality. So now instead of a simple 2D rendering, I can create an entire 3D virtual re experience around us and it's indistinguishable from the real thing.
We have a large audience of sales professionals. Do we need to be nervous, the front lines? Are we going to be replaced by, a, you know, hi, welcome to the ABC Builder? It actually, the role of chatbots and robotics is actually something really interesting in our industry. It's not about replacing anybody in our industry, but it is about how can we stay open for longer hours. Remote access, so there's a company called InterNow uh, that provides re remote access, for, as an example, to model homes. What they find is about 25% of the visitors to model homes come before 8 o'clock in the morning and after 6 o'clock at night. So the builder then has two options. I either don't want those people to know who we are, I don't want to give them access, or I've got to start staffing longer hours, which is really expensive. So you can use technology, in this case remote access, with security, authentic authentication, and verification, and then think about what if there was a chatbot, robot inside, that could actually give you a tour and answer questions. Or you could have a, an app, for example, that would give you a tour of all the model homes in the community. So these are just uses of technology that will leverage the human assets that we already have. In a leadership position as a chief executive officer, you you're, have a lot of responsibilities. What are some of the resources that you go to, um, you know, to bring life to you, to get, to stay encouraged, to pick up leadership skills? I'm always interested in the mindset of the the leaders. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the first thing I do is I, I go outside the auto, uh, outside the home building industry to study industries. So earlier this week, I spent three days at the Consumer Electronics Show, and and I have press pass and credentials for all those shows. So I so I go and talk to what's happening in the auto in, automobile industry, what's happening in the consumer electronics industry, what what's happening in the robotics industry, what's happening with drones, right? How are other industries using these technologies? And I think it's easier to, take, to look at uh, that roadmap and how they've been able to navigate those technologies and to then come back to home building. And you might say, oh, wow, you're a leader and you look clairvoyant. No, actually not. Not a leader at all. I'm just observing what's going on in other industries and, and working really hard to bring them into home building. Any books, podcasts that you follow that have been... Uh positive in your life? Uh, yeah, I use uh, Flipbook religiously. I don't know if you ever use that. I follow about 300 subjects on Flipbook. I, I, I read it every night. Uh, I have a Twitter following, so it's uh, at Byline Tim. And I basically s just send out all kinds of technology tidbits, things on virtual reality, augmented reality, robotics, chatbots, artificial intelligence, you name it. Uh, it's an odd portfolio of different technologies. So we used to say that, um, you know, VR is the future, augmented reality is the future, but that's kind of it's now. Not, it's, it's not, not it's not now. So now what's the future? In, in fact, the, the you know, presentation I just gave two hours ago here was, uh, you know, VR is the re new reality. Be because I, I, two years ago we probably did a dozen virtual reality projects for builders. I would call all of them sandbox projects. They were really just tests to kind of see what the process was like and, and, and what, what, the, what the virtual reality experience was. They weren't really planning to use them in any significant way commercially. This year we probably did uh, north of 75 projects for builders. We already have one builder that has ordered 250 for next year. So we'll do probably a thousand projects next year. So two years ago, yeah, it was a science project. Now we have a thousand virtual reality offerings across the United States, uh, you know, coming in 2018. Where does a builder begin? Because there's still builders trying to figure out websites and basic stuff, and now you're throwing this on them. Um, so tell me about what you do and how you help builders. I mean, that, that is kind of our job. The, the jobs of our uh, digital consultants is to meet with builders uh, and try to help them with a digital strategy. Uh, it, whether it be their traffic acquisition strategy, their website strategy, whether it be um, online advertising strategy, social media, whether it you know, doesn't matter what portion of their strategy needs help. That's really what our online uh, consultants are really all about. Perfect. Um, any last shout outs? So you've got a big team, and I know that you know, you're the star of the show, but who are the people behind the scenes that, that are grinding, making things happen in, in your organization? Uh, we've, we've got specialists in every single area that work day and night around the world, actually. We have 600 people. We have over 250 people in India. We have 200 people in Costa Rica and Central America, and another 150 people here in the United States. So there are people working all night long trying to figure out what the latest technology is and how to make it more affordable and easier for builders to consume. How do we follow you and uh, what's the best way to, to keep in touch? Well, if you're a technology geek and you love doing stuff, follow me at, at Byline Tim, Tim on Twitter. That's what I use to just kind of send out the tidbits that I find uh, on all of the research that I do and all the trade shows that I go to. That's the best way. And then, of course, you can go to uh, the BDX.com where we have a ton of white papers and educational content about all this kind of stuff and examples. 
Any last uh, just free tips that you could give to a builder who's watching? Some low-hanging fruit, some of the things that's like, hey, maybe they can't afford VR, but you can do this. Well, everybody can afford VR. That's the first tip is it, it isn't that expensive. But I think the, the fundamentally the tip is don't wait. Uh, the, the number one problem that I see with people adopting technology is they look at the existing technology and they go, oh, but it will be cheaper next year, or next year it will solve this problem, or next year it's going to be wireless, or next year it's going to be this. What happens is next year, it's true, all of those things will be solved, except now there's another set of things that the following year are going to happen. So what happens is you, you end up doing nothing. So year after year, you do nothing. My recommendation is do something. Get moving. It's okay to make mistakes. It's about how fast you address those mistakes in, the, in this kind of fast-changing technology and landscape that we're in. I want to get your opinion. Augmented 360 VR, where are you placing your bet? So virtual reality uh, in, in, in 360 spherical, whether it's photography or whether it's through modeling and rendering, that's all virtual reality. The deployment of that is ready. It's ready for prime time. It saves builders a ton of money in not having to necessarily uh, build as many model homes as we build today. It gives them an opportunity to, to sell more than just their model homes so they get better dispersion uh, in, in their uh, communities for, uh, for sales of different models that they have. Uh, it increases their, their sales or their options by about 30%. So huge financial uh, implications for them uh, there. Augmented reality um, is going to be a lot harder for builders because they're going to have to have an app. And most builders that got into the app business a few years ago all abandoned them. They're expensive to build. They're expensive to maintain. Builders don't like that. So the BDX actually has a solution for them coming out at the end of Q2 where they'll be giving an app to all builders that are BDX uh, clients. So they won't have to maintain an app anymore. At that point, then, augmented reality gates will get blown wide open because they'll have an app that they can put augmented reality in. Fascinating stuff. I'm, I always, I'm always watching the BDX. I always come to their booth. We're at the International Builder Show. I love the goggles. It's mind-blowing. Thanks so much for being on the program, and it's uh, really exciting to see what you're doing. Any last shout-outs? No, we're good. Good luck to everybody. Here at newhomesales.com with Tim at the BDX.